Thank you, conference. Moving on to resolution 20, decriminalize cannabis for medical use, to be proposed. Shh. Thank you. <laughs> to be proposed by Laura Brennan Whitefield and seconded by Jennifer Dunn. Welcome, Laura, who's also a first-time speaker. Good morning, conference. There's a lot of people here today. That's, that's good. Um, my name is Laura, and I have been living with multiple sclerosis for nine years. And the fact I am standing here conference giving this speech means that I am one of the lucky ones. It has become very clear to me over these last nine years that many people living with MS have been using cannabis to help with the symptoms of that condition. In fact, it's one of the worst kept secrets at the hospital. All of these people risk a criminal record, unlike in Australia, Chile, Canada, Finland, France, Germany, Romania, and some US states. Some allow the raw plant, others a mouse spray. In any case, we as a developed Western nation are fast becoming behind the times. We are the odd ones out. In fact, a report published on the 13th of September of this year by a cross-party group of MPs and peers was called on the government to introduce a system that grants people access to cannabis for medical reasons and to criminalise the growing of small amounts at home for the same purposes. However, the law as it stands in the UK means that cannabis is a Class B drug and the current penalty for possession is up to five years in prison, an unlimited fine or both, and for supply and production up to 14 years in prison, an unlimited fine or both. Now, I don't think someone who is in pain should be criminalised for trying to ease that pain. But it is worth noting, if you have MS and the money, with an annual supply for a typical patient expected to cost around £4,250, you can obtain a private prescription for a drug called Stativex, which is licensed but not widely available on the NHS, both in England and Scotland, which contains cannabinoids. Does that sound fair to you? If you can pay, you're not breaking the law, but if you can't, you run the risk of a criminal record. Not only that, you're forced into relying on an illegal drug market where there is no guarantee of quality and consistency of supply. And can I be clear at this point, conference, I am talking about the medical use only of cannabis. And it is that medical use which is wider than just MS. Arthritis, cancer, Crohn's disease, epilepsy, palliative care have all been shown to benefit from cannabis medications. Given that these people who are suffering pain, and I can assure you, conference, have by the time they are willing to use cannabis, in most cases, exhausted every other option, is it not unreasonable to criminalise them? I am talking... I am talking about some of the most vulnerable people in society who may have had the added misfortune of going through the DWP's inhumane assessment procedure for disability <laughs> benefits. <laughs> to then brand them criminals for trying to have a quality of life. I know what it is to suffer pain. And be in no doubt conference, if it came to it, I would not hesitate to ease that pain any way I could, because that is a natural instinct. But the problem being, if my condition was to deteriorate to that stage, I would be relying on other people to help me, my friends, my family, and most of all my partner, Stephen, who I really don't thank enough for the care that he gives me, so I'm thanking him now. I don't think carers should be criminalised either. A drug conviction has very real consequences, serious consequences for your future prospects and employment prospects. Conference, I think now is the time to show that we are the party of compassion and common sense. And it
now that we should be sending out to a, a message to those people in pain that we hear you and we are not shying away from this issue. <laughs> as Westminster has. Let's today start this journey that's lead with our hearts and our minds by demanding the devolution of power to allow us to address this issue. I urge conference to pass this resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. And to sum up for the resolution, welcome back, Laura. Let me be clear, conference. I am not advocating the smoking of cannabis. What I am advocating is a progressive and reasonable, compassionate society where you can access... <laughs> ..access pain relief. I believe we have the talent, the skills and the ability in Scotland to make this work. And I would simply say to some of the speakers, if it can be done in Germany and the States and all the other countries I pointed out, it can be done here and there can be quality control and consistency of supply. They've managed it, we can do it. I would also ask you not to remit this back. Don't file it away for things to do another day. It's too important. And as for the ability to relieve pain through exercise, where that may be appropriate for some people, for the people I'm talking about, they're bedridden, they're in wheelchairs, they're in agony, and they need relief now. Please vote for this resolution. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, delegates, cards are ready. What I'll do is I'll take a vote for the remit back and then the resolution. Those in favour of the remit back, please show. Cards down. Those against the remit back, please show. Cards down. The remit back falls. Those in favour of the resolution, please show. Cards down. Those against the resolution, please show. The resolution is passed overwhelmingly. <laughs>